it's so cool when um people that are that called you to do a thing you love and the people that are reading with you you love it's like a it's a love fest this is my comfort scarf so oftentimes I wear it even if it doesn't match because I don't care <laughs> I'm past the point where I, I care about that um so yeah I wanted to let you know that I feel comfortable and it's also helping me feel comfortable. Thank you so much, all of you, for your words. Um, again, I think you can see this was curated because they're not the same, uh, and they all have so much to say, and I am deeply moved, and I'm trying to pull it together and stall so that I can do my thing. Uh, I would like to take a moment of silence for all the people that we've lost, that could be anyone for you. And I'd like to take a moment to honor those people and also uh, bring in my ancestors and yours. Thank you. So my style of reading, I just push through. So you don't, you don't, don't feel like you have to clap between poems. Um, if you want to, I'm not gonna be like, stop. <laughs> but uh, I, just, I just push through. You ready? All right. A poem for when you were with your coworkers at the diversity meeting and instead of them talking to you about it later, they wanna tell you about Marie Kondo. Or no shade Marie Kondo. But I wanted to talk about the diversity meeting. Quote, Marie Kondo says, but when we really delve into the reasons for why we can't let something go, there are only two, an attachment to the past or a fear for the future. My coworkers say this with big smiles. I want to let systemic racism go, but I'm attached to the past of it, and Lord knows what it happens when it happens to the tangled ropes it knots in my future. And I am left there hanging, and then Marie Kondo tells them to tell me I can do it. Marie Kondo says this so pretty and reserved, and I'm jealous because Marie Kondo even has a daughter who likes to fold laundry. My coworkers remind me I suck at this. There is still no talk of the diversity training. I want to ask if I should fold fiery and dirty laundry too. If shoving a shoulder in on both sides is a gesture of letting things go. I want to put all the systems of oppression in one pile. All the internalism class, all the internalized classism in another pile. I want to put the patriarchy pile into two piles because there are lights and there are darks, and I'm forced to sift through them evenly. Marie Kondo tells them, and they tell me, visible mess helps distract us from the true source of the disorder. I want to declutter the womb. I want to declutter wombs who thought they belonged to someone else, who thought they belonged to themselves. I want to declutter wombs and send them on bent hangers and old gloves. I want to send them away. They are still not talking about the diversity training. Marie Kondo tells them to tell me, tidy by category, not by place. To which I respond, Portland, 58.1%. Washington, D.C., 51.9%. Minneapolis, 50.6%. Seattle, 50%. Atlanta, 46.2%. Virginia Beach, 46.2%. Denver, 42.1%. Austin, 39.7%. Is there a pile for gentrification? I want to gather up the bricks and the pods from the gentrified well and tell Marie Kondo, this is what I want to let go of. 
Maybe she will tell them to tell me, yes, I can help you wash your life and create white space again. Eulogy for the black woman, or I don't want to think about dying, or eulogy, or dying, or everyday people are dying, or I'm worried if I'm going to die, or die, 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 or I have to remember I'm living. One. The black woman was a badass bitch with titties so ancient. Each one fed a million mouths, and those mouths fell, fell and filled and fell and filled and fill and fall and fall. I'm falling, I'm falling. I'm trying to remember I'm living. Eulogy for the black woman. She was a badass. She is a badass. She was a badass. I'm trying to remember I'm living. There's people dying. Eulogy for the black woman. One. She was a badass. 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 Eulogy for the black woman. I'm dying. No, I'm alive. Am I living? Eulogy for the black woman. One. She was a badass bitch with titties so ancient. Each one fed a million mouths and some mouths mouth off to her. Mother of a thread full of mercies and she blanketed the cold, cold world like a sun with a sweating pussy. Insert crying here. Insert news reports here. Insert your one black friend who is not dying here. Two, she was the mother to many and an altar full of drowned babies and she was not always motherly too, not because she couldn't, but sometimes she didn't wanna have no babies. Insert crying here. Insert your one black friend here. Insert, insert, insert. I am dying. I am alive. People are dying. Eulogy for the black woman. Eulogy for the black woman. Eulogy for the black woman. I am alive. I am dying. They are dying. There are transgender women dying. It's dying. It's dying. It's dying. It's dying. Three, the black woman had hips and lips, small, small, big and large, all sizes, and an ass so deep couldn't nobody put up with her shit, and sometimes they did, though. She was a fertilizer to many. Three, now, right now, yesterday, tomorrow, laying curled up in a yarn ball with plaits and shea butter and greasy knees, praying to Nina or Anita or Audrey or Octavia or Lilith or trying to get a Luther, 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 Luther fix. I am trying to remember this is a eulogy for a dead black woman. I am alive. Am I alive? People are dying. I am trying to live. I am trying to live. Eulogy for the black woman, five. The black woman was well disrespected by all. And no matter what, she was most known and appreciated for pushing herself beyond limits any human being should ever have to push themselves through. People will say, we love the way she kept it pushing. Oh, the black woman is so strong. Do you see how she's slaying it? Ooh, she gives me life. Insert gospel song here. Insert stereotype here. Insert the icons you do not call or contact here. I am living, I am living. I do not want to write a poem about the eulogy for the black woman. Insert blank here. Thank you. <laughs> Two more. No. Everybody, say it with me. No. no. Keep it going. No. 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 Wave your hand. No, thank you. No. No. There are people using $8 words to talk about race and race relations, and I think that's great. And all I can hold in my mouth today is this. No. 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 And I know this isn't frosting on a gluten-free cupcake or PhD-esque, 
But it's all I can muster with the vulnerability of myself spread around like hummus on a whole food cracker. <laughs> no, no. The women are wearing pricey clothing and expensive jewelry and they are slaying it with the power of their education. And my white colleagues are saying, yes, yes, you are speaking all the right language. I wanna be your ally, but we never say hello in the elevator and all I can think of is no, no. no. And this will not put me on the best publications or land me a book deal with the best bookseller or get me circulated as the most educated black woman on the scene. But my lineage is a worker bee's haven for desiccated wombs and deaf ventricles which swarm and all I can revolution up is. No. 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 Oh, I'm never going to get to retire this poem, so I'm not going to try. But I do hope the uh, main character slash real person that I do love, maybe she's gonna see this poem on YouTube and call me and we can like have an experiment in a cafe and see what happens. <laughs> that would be cool. I just love her so much. The women inhale coffee while Lululemon sweaters dangle like static in hair or flaccid dicks or participles while they dote and coo over Michelle Obama. <laughs> and they must have said a million times, Michelle Obama is so classy and strong and classy and strong and classy and strong and classy and strong and witty and well-dressed. Oh, Michelle Obama! Sitting next to me. Never look my way. Never say hi. Never say hello. Never say good morning. Never say pass the sugar. Only talk in my space about Michelle Obama. Then say, what if Michelle Obama were to go shopping with us? Talk about Michelle Obama like they on a first name basis with her, like Michelle Obama gonna come right on over. Say, what if Obama walked down our street in a hoodie? <gasps> What must it be like to raise black kids in this America? Michelle Obama is so brave and classy and strong and classy and strong and classy and strong and witty and well-dressed. It's in the afternoon. Never even say good afternoon to me. Never even look my way. Never even say pass the sugar or go to hell. And I start to think, maybe I'm not classy or strong. Maybe I'm not witty or well-dressed. Maybe I'm not raising kids in this here black America. Maybe I'm not, maybe I'm not, maybe I'm not, maybe I'm not, never even say good evening to me. Never even say pass the sugar. Never even look my way. So classy and strong. So classy and strong. Did you see what she was wearing? Oh, Michelle Obama. And I'm not jealous of Michelle Obama or Oprah Winfrey. I've just come to realize I'm an everyday nigga. I've come to realize I will never hang on their walls with a yellow thumbtack. They will never see how classy and strong and witty and well-dressed or raising black kids I am in this here 